Hello again. In this tutorial, we're going to revisit Registax, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a step by step uh, planetary uh, processing, and we're going to do it on Saturn. Um, you know, we're going to assume that you've already got your AVI, uh, we've covered that in other tutorials, and you know, just sort of work through step by step. So, we're going to use zooms and, and everything to sort of show you the stages uh, completely bit by bit. Uh, again, it's not for the like you know the experienced um, image of this. It's it's for just to get you started really, and and producing acceptable results. Now I will say that when you're taking your AVI, again I can't state it enough. The most important thing is focus, focus, focus. You can't fix bad focus. You know if you spend half an hour taking your focus in the first place when you when you're actually filming your AVI, everything else we can fix. Even if your planet's sort of moving about on your screen, we can fix that with Registax. Um, but focus we just can't do anything about so like I said just you know spend time with your focus and get it in there and I highly recommend that you get yourself a batting of mask um, you know and focus up on a bright star first and it saves you an hell of a lot of time and you know I, I got one and I have to say that it's improved my imaging 100% just makes everything so so easier so get yourself a batting of mask I mean for the sake of like 15 pounds it will save you a lot of heartache so let's go on to the, the screen grabs now and, and, and whip into screen mode and like I said we'll go step by step getting through everything. Um, you know you're not going to turn masterpieces out at the end of this, it'll show you the basics and we'll get you being able to comfortably use Registax and it will, it's got a lot more uh, features with it um, and you'll learn you know as you progress further on you know see other tutorials and and you know work through them and sort of add stages and everything but i think at the end of this we'll get you some some quite acceptable results that you'll be fairly happy with so let's get on with it okay first of all let's just take a look at our avi of, uh, of saturn and as you can see conditions were fairly good and the planet's still sort of bouncing about a little bit uh, if you look, you can see sort of a bluish tinge on the top, and if you've got really good eyes, you might also see an orangey tinge sort of on the bottom. Don't worry about that, we can fix that later. Um, and this is also sort of the level of gain that you want to be looking at. Don't be sort of, you know, pushed to, to ramp that gain up and, and sort of, you know, make it look brighter on your screen. Um, it's a lot easier to, to get a good image from something that's just slightly dark than it is from something that's too bright and washed out. Um, so this is sort of the level of, of brightness, as I said, that you want to be seeing on, on your screen. Um, and if you watch closely, you can see where it sort of shifts in and out of focus with the, with the atmospherics. And, you know, this is sort of the level of focus that we want. If you're doing it manually, then, you know, get your target in like this and watch it and watch it for sort of 10 minutes and just tweak your focus and make sure that those points when it does sort of shift into focus, that it, it, it's pin sharp. And like I said, you know, a batting of mask for this is, is, is you know, it's, it's, it's a massive help. So this is sort of roughly what your AVI should look like. And next, let's just load it into Registax. Right, we've now got Registax opened, um, and the first thing that we're going to want to do is to import our AVI. Now, uh, just a quick word about AVI length. Um, for a planet, normally you want to be looking at about a thousand frames, um, and sometimes a little bit over, it actually depends on your subject. If you're taking such as Jupiter, then you don't really want to go above sort of a thousand to twelve hundred frames because Jupiter turns very, very fast, its rotations quite fast. And what happens is you can introduce what you call rotation errors, which means that you're at the, the planet is actually rotating a little bit whilst you're taking your AVI. And that can start to sort of bring in, you know, its own few problems uh, with sort of focus and, and, and just blurring your image a little bit. So as a comfortable sort of average, you know, and, and for starting out, just take a thousand frames of whichever planet, um, you know, and it's plenty to, to get you going. So let's bring our Plower AVI into, into Registax. So the first thing we want to do is click on Select and just browse basically using the, the window that opens into wherever you've kept your AVI, wherever you've saved it, and open it up. Now you'll notice if you mouse over, over your AVI, you'll see a selection square, um, and obviously that's quite a big square that one. Um, and don't be tempted at the minute to sort of click in your picture. Uh, we need to do a little bit of preparation first. If we move down to the bottom 
of the Registax window, you'll see that there's a slider here and there's a go to frame box here with little arrows on it. Now you can either use the slider and move the slider across and as you can see it plays through your AVI frame by frame as you move the slider. I actually like to use the box, I just find it a little bit more accurate and I just hold down on the up arrow of the box. Now what we're doing is we're watching our AVI and we're trying to find a really good frame, you know a frame where everything seems to be sharp and everything's in focus. Um, now just by luck I seem to have fallen on, on a fairly good one there but we'll just go over the process again. Um, and you know watch for small details if you if you're doing sort of Saturn watch for the Cassini belt um, the division rather just coming up in the belts or watch the stripes for just sharpening up um, you know as you work your way through and you will find quite a difference in variation in, in a number of your pictures that's quite a nice sharp one now now so what we're going to do next is we're going to select a suitable selection box if you like for um, for our planet. Now this is a 256 one which is a bit big so we'll move down to the to the next size which is a 128 and have a look at that. Now if anything that's just a little bit too small. Um, so looks like the 256 is going to be the one for it to be honest. Now next what we do is we just click on our planet like so um, and it's, it's now selected with uh, with that box there and what we're going to do first is we're going to align it now Registax is fairly intuitive it, it gives you clues as to what it is that you've got to do next so if we move up to the top end you can see that in green underline now is the align button which is what we're going to do next so we click the align button and what that's doing is it's taking every frame of your AVI and it's just putting them into alignment you see the planets sort of moving about it's actually moving them so that they're all layered one on top of the other exactly uh, a little bit like if you had tracing paper um, you know doing an animation and you're stacking one on top of the other um, and that's what it's doing at the moment is it's aligning now this could take some time it depends on the power of your your PC um, as to how long it takes to do it and, and sort of you know how big your AVI is and everything so what we'll do is I'll just sort of pause the video and come straight back when uh, when this section is finished. Okay, that section's now finished. As you can see, the the bar on the bottom has gone to 100%. So it's it's actually finished aligning those images. Now the next one we want to do is again if we go to the top, it's underlined in green limit. So we're going to click limit. Now at this stage, as you get more advanced, you can start to do what they call creating reference frames and everything. And for this tutorial, we're just not going to do that. It's it, you know it's for later on, and the aim of this is really to sort of just get you going and getting some acceptable results. So what we're going to do at this point is move up to the top again and click the button Optimize and Stack. Now what that's doing is it's looking at your images again. Um, obviously the the sort of aligned but now it's it's looking at the quality of each one and it's stacking one on top of the other taking all the little good bits if you like and mixing them all up to try and create one single image that's like got all the good bits of all your frames uh, mixed in and, and rejecting the bad parts and again this can take a while um, so what we're going to do again is I'm going to sort of pause the recording until this section's finished and then we'll come back to it again Right, that section is now finished and as you can see we've now got our image of, of Saturn. Um, the screen's now changed uh, in Registax. We've got this panel that's opened up called the Wavelets panel. So if I hear anybody referring to Wavelets, these, this is the section that they're talking about. Now let's just take a closer look at our image uh, and as you can see it's, it's fairly blurred. Um, looks very much like just one of the single frames in our AVI at the moment. And as I pointed out earlier, you can see where the colour isn't quite matched up. There's a little bit of blue there, and it's it's caused by uh, atmospherics that um, and colour shifting. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to just clean that up. Now, if we move over to this right-hand side where these buttons are, in the middle you will see RGB align. So if we click on there, we'll get this small window opens up next, and I've always found that Estimate does as good a job as anything. Uh, it basically just is, is auto mode if you like 
Um, and if we click on estimate, and if you watch this image now, it takes a moment to think about it and do the, the maths and work it out. And there it is. We've got a, a dramatic move, uh, difference there. Now, you know, the blue's, the blue's gone, really. So we can close that one up. Um, and the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to start playing with the, with the wavelet. Now, sometimes it might help if you move over to this side again. There's a view zoomed button, which you can click, and it will just give you a zoomed in image. And as you can see, it's, you know, when, once you start to zoom in, it looks a little bit ropey. Um, but what you can do is as you start to play with your wavelets, you can zoom in and just have a look whether it, you know, you're seeing a significant difference or not. Um, now, some people prefer just to use the bottom two wavelets with planetary. Um, what I say is play about with them all, you know, have a mess about with everything. Um, you know, you're not going to do any harm because if you if you mess up, then just, you know, move them back again. And again, it's a matter of just playing around. As you move these wavelets up, they're all degrees of sharpening. Just from moving that one, as we have a look at our image again now, you can see that the Cassini division has started to sharpen up. And you can also see a very faint trace here of, of a pale blotch, which is actually the remnants of a stone on the, on the surface. So, you know, it started to improve things already. And like I said, just start to play about with these wavelets. And you'll see now that the bands have started to sharpen up. And if you overdo it, then, you know, it starts to look a bit awful. Um, you get blotches in your colouring and stuff. And it, it just starts to look artificial. So, as I said, just sort of play about with them, with your wavelets. And just, you know, see what you're starting to get. As you can see now, the Cassini division sharpened up even more. And the storm started to look a little bit more prominent, as of some of the colours. Um, I mean, that's basically it with the wavelets. It's it's different for every single AVI that you do. Sometimes you might find that you can shift these wavelets right over, and, and you know it improves things dramatically. Sometimes you might find that the slightest little touch, and, and you're overdoing it. Um, so we'll just have a play about with these, like I said, and just get an, an average image. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it because I'd be here sort of, you know, for too long for the video. But I think, you know, basically we've got we've got a fairly average image there. Um, again, we can view zoomed, and you can see now a massive difference between what we looked at a minute ago and what we've got now. Um, you know, it's starting to look a lot sharper. And you know, don't forget this is something that's thousands of miles away, so it's not going to be pin sharp perfect. Um, and also, once you have completed the Reggie Stacks, that's at this that point is where we're going to finish with this tutorial. You can get your image later and load it into sort of your favourite paint package, such as PaintShop Pro or, or Photoshop or something, and sharpen it up a little bit more, or even you know just boost the colours up and, and, and mess with your levels and your curves, and you can get a little bit more out of it. Um, so as I said, that's you know that's for, for further on. Um, at this point, we can sort of boost the contrast up and brightness a little bit, maybe just bring a little bit more detail out. And again, be careful with it, you know, it's easy to overdo. So just be gentle with your brightness and your contrast. And just until you get something that, you know, that you're happy with. You know, at the end of the day, nine times out of ten, these images are, are for you, you know, it's not for everybody else. Um, you know, that if you get compliments on it, then it's all well and good, but, you know, they're for your own satisfaction mostly. Um, right, so I've got an image there that I'm, I'm fairly happy with. Uh, just give it a little touch more and tweak it up. Now, once we've got an image there that we're, that we're fairly happy with, you need to move up to this next button, Do All, which is it, it basically performs all the actions that we've just we've just done and, and locks them into your image. So if we click Do All, there we go. It's, it's done all the actions actually on the image now. The image is you know, it, it's, it's had all the processing done on it. Right, what we want to do now is move up to the top again after we've clicked do all. And this time it's, it's not as intuitive. It's, it's, you know, it's still giving the, the do all thing because it's expecting maybe you want to do a little bit more with it, uh, maybe not. But at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to move up to this tab, the final tab, and we click that. And now there's a few more little changes that we can make in the hue and the saturation and the lightness. To be honest, I would leave hue alone. Um, you know, it, it, you can make a right mess of your pictures doing that. The saturation, sometimes just the slightest little tweak of it will just start to sort of give them colours a little bit more. 
you know, bring your colours up in, in your image. So we've just given that a slight little tweak in there, just to, like I said, bring them colours up. And we're about done there. Um, if we move next down to where it says Save Image, click on Save Image. Now I like to save as a PNG um, file. I find that they, you know, they're, they're hardly compressed and they tend to keep the quality of your image. So all we've got to do is we've got to give our picture a name, which we're going to call this one Saturn 24. Um, and click on save. Like so. So next what we're going to do is we're going to close Registax and go over to the picture and just give you a, a close-up of the final image that we've turned out and then we'll show you sort of a before and after and, you know, see what you think. Okay, what we've got here now is we've got the AVI playing on this side and we've got our finished image on this side uh, just to sort of give you a comparison. And I think you'll agree that, you know, it's been quite successful that uh, from this sort of horrible, blurry, jumping about image, which, you know, you'd be quite happy to actually see through your telescope, um, you know, if you were just using the eye, uh, to this. You know, that's that's quite an acceptable image, that. And I think you'd be happy to sort of post that on any internet forum or to, you know, show it to your family members and bore them to death and everything. And that's about it, basically. So, once again, thanks for watching.